Now, I have to bring this up because uh, obviously Deadpool came out earlier this year. Yeah. The best lines in that he hasn't film. Seen it. You haven't seen Deadpool? No, no. I, I have. I loved it. Well, it was I great... really like people acting and stuff. So yeah. I don't, I don't, he only likes people. to watching himself. I got to bring up that in line, though. It's <laughs> like. There's a scene when Colossus is dragging Deadpool away and he says, yeah, I'm taking you to Professor I've heard about it. Professor I've heard about it. I'm so pleased that to ever get mentioned in a movie, yeah. uh, like my mm-hmm. actual name. Yeah. It's happened once or twice before. It happened in Funny People, I think, as well. And I was sitting there watching Funny People and I was like, ah! and I was, <laughs> I'm in the cinema and I'm like, ah! <laughs> He's like, I'm taking you to, and he goes, and he goes McAvoy or Stewart. These timelines are so confusing. Yeah. So I'm wondering, he they, he makes fun of X Men a lot in these films. I'm wondering how would it's Professor? Because he's jealous because he wasn't invited. Agreed. Yeah. <laughs> so how would Professor X respond to Deadpool's uh, jokes and making fun of the X Men? <sighs> oh, Charles has got it's a pretty decent. Mind. Yeah, I think so. I just go like, chill, man. Be unfunny for a second. <laughs> um, I think Charles has got a pretty good sense of humour. So if we were allowed off the leash and allowed to be a little less PG-13, I think I think we'd actually roll with it pretty good. When we see a sequence where another actor is Mystique, obviously, and then you switch to the Mystique and the CGI goes down and you become you in the makeup. Yeah. Um, when they shoot that, how how does that work with you? Do you stand there for the shot? How, do they, how does that work? They have this really nifty monitor that has like kind of a a layout, what, what do you call it, like a stencil? What, is that what you say when you trace something? Um, oh, it's a, um, a, simulcam. Like a template thing. Simulcam? That you have to line up just so. So if somebody's taller than me, I have to stand on an apple box or like if they're short, so you line, line it up perfectly. Simulcam? Huh? Simulcam, is simulcam? that what it's called? I. I I feel like I'm you're making count. up a word, so I'm just, kind of, <laughs> I'm just kind of trying to move past it. <laughs> That's really cool, though. I've always wanted to know Apparently how... Apparently, it's called simulcam. simulcam. That's very, very yeah. cool. What do you think Katniss and Mystique would talk about if they could meet? I feel like they wouldn't even talk. They'd probably just fight. <laughs> they probably... They, I, don't, I don't see them getting along well. Who'd win that fight? Um, Ooh, Mystique. Mystique. Yeah, Mystique. It's got to be, doesn't it? Yeah, I don't know. Katniss, Katniss, isn't, is strong Katniss isn't good at making friends, though. Like, she only... She only likes like Peta like when he's dying. <laughs> she's always like she's always like whatever. And then as soon as he's like almost dead, she's like oh my god. Oh my god. I think this is a terrible friend. The sneak would become you so skinny. <laughs> One of my favorite shots of all time is the long tracking shot in Atonement. Blew Ooh. my mind. It's like this five minute beach tracking shot. And I'm wondering when you work on it, when you do a shot like that, does that better you as an actor? Like, and, and the sense of like, do you still think about that moment and like how I you do became... you think about that moment? I think about that moment every night. As I touch myself. No, um, I think about that. that we all show. do. I know. Yeah, I know. that's in my spank bank too. I know. It's, um, no, I do. I remember that moment a lot. And uh, uh, I don't know if it makes you. I think everything you do, every experience you have as an actor, sort of improves your wealth of experience and it expands your wealth of experience. But um, in terms of making you a better actor, I don't know. I, I know that I got to help recreate. I don't think you made you a better actor. I don't think you made it worse. <laughs> what you're talking about right now. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're high as a cat <laughs> and you need to stop showing off. Um, uh, I don't know, but I know I got to help recreate and evoke the spirit of an incredible moment in history mm. and in individuals' history as well as a collective history, and that was a massive privilege. And I felt sort of, I felt I'll never forget getting to do that because it was it was it, truly monumental. Um, uh, but what was really interesting about that scene is that <clears throat> we knew we'd have to walk. I don't know what we covered. It was like half a mile that we covered during that that shot, and the night before. Danny Mays, who um, who played one of the three soldiers as we were walking around for that whole section, he'd fallen off a wall the oh. day before, like, and the night before, it was, might have been like a 20 foot fall or something oh like my that. God. And, and we thought he'd broken his ankle. So he did that entire sort of trek with like a dodgy old limb, oh, just going, God. got to get this done, man, we've got a thousand extras. This is the spirit of Normandy, we've got to do it. Yeah, that's amazing. They're wrapping me up. Thank you guys so cool. much. You guys Thank are always you. awesome to talk to. I got my usual suspect stub for singer today. Oh, I'm fantastic. excited. Now, I have to really ask you about cool. the Quicksilver moments, obviously, the slow motion shots. Because, I mean, first time I saw Daisy Future Pass, I said on the air, I was like, I would pay $20 to watch that scene on a loop for three hours. That's how great <laughs> yeah. that moment was. Wow. And I'm wondering, when you're shooting that scene, are they really, are the actors really standing still around you? Are you really moving their yes. arms? Yes. Yeah, they're, they're, they're doing mannequin. I don't are know if they? you guys ever learned mannequin. How do you do they're, mannequin? Can you do you know, I take mannequin, mannequin, you know? And then, and, then, <laughs> and then I go up and I move them, and that's kind of what, what happens. And then the things that you're so touching good. and maneuvering, is any of that really there? Like the bullet, I know the bullets are CG, but I mean, is there anything there that you're bullets actually... Are, no, that stuff wasn't there. The soup wasn't there. Uh, 
Do they tell you beforehand like what you're moving? Like you're gonna be moving <laughs> yeah. soup. You're gonna, They're like, move it a little do, higher. Do move stuff. it higher. <laughs> move it over there. Over there. Okay, you're in someone's face now. Okay, move it over there. So yeah, that's. It's kind of trial and error. And you're on a treadmill, right? I'm on and, a treadmill, baby. And, uh, and is the camera treadmill. like right in your face? Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Can't, we had a great rig this time that was like attached to me on this metal thing, and then the camera was there, and then they had a sandbag on the back to balance it out. <laughs> and, oh, and then I'm, I'm standing there going like this, <laughs> like standing still. That's this thing where uh, this the the part of that scene where like the background is moving really fast. Yeah. Oh. So, that's a really cool shot. Just now, gave it away. If you could see Sansa and Jean Grey have a conversation, what would their like? What do you would they nerd <laughs> out they about things? About? Yeah. What would they talk about? I want I, I want to see this happen as hair. a nerd. <laughs> yeah. Just like, oh, your hair color is so <laughs> your nice. Your hair is so nice. <laughs> um. God, I don't know. I think Sansa would probably just like cry for a bit. Just she needs a friend. <laughs> And uh, she just needs someone to confide in. Uh, and Jean, I don't know what they talk about. I don't feel like they'd get on very well. Jean could read her mind. Jean could yes. just be like, be I already like, know what you're going to say. I know say. what you're crying about. It's going to be OK. <laughs> yeah. I know you've been asked this question a zillion times about yeah. Jon Snow's fate and what happened. I mean, obviously, we saw what happened. He's alive now. I'm just wondering how long you knew about it. Like, I mean, obviously, everyone knew. The cast knew. The directors knew. The writers knew. Did you guys know because of knowing her? Did, uh, you? did you know? Yeah, did I knew. Mm -hmm. Because Evan of, and I were the only ones that knew. I helped write it. So. Mm -hmm. Even Kit Harrington didn't know. Yeah. Um, How long I was. You know? I'm Kit's stunt double, so I actually had to play that part yeah. right. leading you, up to it. You were the laying head. there. Uh -huh, I did. Mm -hmm. I, I was lying there, so I knew. But I signed a lot of NDAs and stuff. But how long did you know for real? Did you know for a long time? Well, so Kit in the fourth season, I think, or whatever season he died at the end of, fifth season, fifth, yeah. um, he told us all that like he, he was gone, he was dead. And then he, um, like, I was the only one who believed him. And I wrote him like a really long letter about like how much I'd enjoyed working with him. <laughs> and it was like really heartfelt. And I was like, it's OK, I won't see him again. It won't be, like, it won't be embarrassing. Um, and then. Like the next season, he came back and he was like, "Surprise!" <laughs> and I was just like, "Dude, screw you! Like, I, I I don't do that for anyone, you know? Like, I don't give compliments out to anyone, Kit." So anyway, so wow. we all found out in the sixth season. This is, I mean, this is like drama. Yeah, I know. This is some BTS I'm not drama. You need to catfish yeah. Kit Harrington now. Sounds like he catfished her. I wait. I was gonna do that the other day. What were you gonna do? Well, cause he got he got this. Um, okay, so basically he got this fan mail. And it like it got delivered to set, and she had her email address on the back. So we were gonna set up a Kit Harrington email. No, find out Kit's email address, log into it because we had his phone while he was shooting, and then we were gonna send him an email and be like, hey, like loved your like loved your stuff, like loved your letter. Um, this is like come meet me here at this time. Why didn't you do and, it? Like give him the address to his house. Did you do it? No, he caught us. Oh, I was geeking out in the movie. I, I had nerd tears. I had to ask you about the shot when you sliced that car in half. <laughs> yeah. How is that actually being filmed? Because, I mean, the shot itself, is it looks like a single take that Stinger does, but you land in the shot. How is that being done? It is It is actually one single take. I, I learned, by, I was up on a platform, and I have wires on, and then I have to jump and flip and holding the swords and land literally like on a dime because the camera guy was right there. And we basically practiced that from the time I got to Montreal and we were just practicing. That was the, l the very last shot I shot for the entire movie was that slicing through the car. It was the very wow. last thing we shot. That and then awesome. we, we wrapped the movie and everyone went home.